What's up, brother? Yo, what's going on, AMS? How you been, man? What's up, brother? I'm good, man. Uh, calling today, man, more so for experience, not really scarcity when I ask this question. Mm -hmm. you, I'm in the Bay Area, so, you know, I talk to a lot of women that are, like, cultured, you know, like Indian, uh, Asian, Black. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you handle it? when their friends or their family got an issue with you when it comes to race. So again, for example, you know, I was chilling with my black girl the other day. Mm -hmm. Her friends just make it mad awkward. And they've told me before, like, you know, your little, you know, we don't really like accept you or can see you like that with her because you're Mexican and she's black. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not asking out of scarcity. It's just experience. Cause one day I'm gonna have to handle it one day, you know, I to get older. Right. So in, if, if I'm dealing with somebody in, um, uh, first of all, how long y'all been dating? Mm. I know that I know this black girl for like a year. Me and her just, you know, talking for a year. All right. And her, what does her family? How do you know they don't like you? Uh, her brother be saying some sly stuff on the low sometimes. I went to go uh, to her, like her little family get together one day, mm -hmm. and I remember we were all just chilling together. And he was like, you know, you try to act like you're one of us, you know, yada yada yada, just mm -hmm. little stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and what makes you think it's because of your race, or he just don't act like that with anybody who's trying to screw his sister? Oh, he, he, he made a no. It's because I was Mexican. Okay. All right. Well, you know what? I ain't got to come around them no more. Right. Uh, the girl I live with, I didn't like her family. They didn't like me. That's fine. Guess what? I don't got to come around y'all no more. And guess right. what? You don't got to come over here no more. That's how you handle that situation. You don't need them. Right. And I would tell her that. Yo, they don't like me. Guess what? I don't like them. And mm -hmm. guess what? I don't got to be around them no more. All right. Right. It's simple as that. Right. Right. So when she come to you, uh, well, we having this, but you can go send me pictures. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not going nowhere that I'm not welcome. Right. Right. It's just, it's just that simple, brother. You don't, you need, you need them. No, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's exactly an experience question. than it is scarcity. Exactly. Would you, would you say the same thing when it comes to her friends? Cause you know how women make a big deal when it comes to their friends. Like, okay, you going out with your friends. Just mm -hmm. go ahead. I'll stay home today. Do what you want. Cause I know your friends just give issues. You a player, brother. I mean, yeah, right. I mean, I, yeah. I listen to you. I mean, I see the I see the chain around your neck. <laughs> I see the earrings. I saw the rollie uh, the 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 AP the watch. watch. The watch, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why they don't like you, brother. <laughs> no, nah, but but I promise you, when I when I go to their family, or at least their family, I can mm -hmm. fuck about the friends. Mm -hmm. When I go to the family, I promise you, it comes off. I was uh I was a marine, so it's like I know how to be professional. Right, it's time to be professional, like. I'm not over there like acting a fool in front of the family and shit. Well, let me tell you this, brother. They don't like you because she is telling them shit. Right, right, right. They don't not just like you for nothing. She is telling them something about you. Right. So for all you guys out there, you guys got to understand that when you go around these, these families like this right here, this girl is painting you as the bad guy. Right. She She's saying... He's he cheats on me. He does this. He does that. She's telling her. And, and then you come around. They hate your fucking guts. And you're like, why y'all don't hate me? Because her ass sitting up playing a victim, painting you out to be Pablo Escobar. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. And so don't get mad at them. If she was painting you in a good light, if she was saying, man, he treat me so good. I don't think you treat it that good. I think you're a sleazeball, but uh, I mean, yeah, man. We ain't gonna talk about that. We gonna, <laughs> hey, we just gonna assume that you're a good guy. I'm just gonna assume you're a good guy. I'm gonna just give you the benefit of the doubt. You don't look like a good guy. You look like a sleazeball, but I'm just gonna assume that you're a good guy. She is telling them stuff. She is, she, she's telling them, brother. Whatever you're doing, she's finding numbers. Girls are calling your phone. She's and she tells them. And when, when you have a sister or somebody like that that you care about and she's with a dude and she's attached to him, but she's no good. I'm going to hate you. I'm just going to let you know. I ain't going to beat your ass because then me and my sister going to have an issue, but I want to beat your ass. You see what I'm saying? But that's all it is, brother. Tell her to listen, stop telling your, her family bad stuff about you. And she's going to be like, I ain't told them that. Yes, she is. I know that. That's, that's And the thing is, all she has to do is tell one person. If she tell her mama or she tell her sister, that's all. She probably ain't told the whole family. She probably told her sister or her mama. That's all it takes. Yeah. And they all going to hate your guts. Yeah, I, I feel it, man. And, and just a quick one for, before I leave. Mm -hmm. Obviously, again, I follow you because, uh, you know, I follow the red pill. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know that offsets what you just said, you know, being a good guy and everything. Mm -hmm. 
was there ever times uh being a red pill like you just took a break from women real quick you know like a month or two just like you know i gotta get this to myself you know you enjoy time to yourself and shit. well when i first started the, the gym right but i always like had at least one chick mm -hmm. right always at least one reliable chick no matter how busy i was when i started security company when i started at the gym and even when i started on youtube yes i was extremely busy but at least had one girl that i could see on a sunday for a couple of hours two or three hours or something like that I always had that but by and large yes i've had multiple times in my life was six days out the week all i did was work when i first started youtube if all you guys that don't remember when i first started youtube some of y'all guys don't remember this i used to do live streams tuesday night and friday night and then i used to have guys tell me something man who the hell does a live stream on friday night and i'm like me motherfucker. i'm grinding right. i wouldn't even stun no girls you know what i'm saying so the thing was i had made that point in my life to where i say i'm just gonna grind and not worry about no women because if I, I'm a dating coach up here doing live streams Friday night at 8 p.m. Right. And, and in the OGs, they remember that. I used to do Friday night at 8 p.m. Because I that, that was the time I had no evening clients to train. So that's what the time I had to do. So yeah. I sacrificed that for the better good, brother. Yeah, de definitely. Because I remember when I talked to you um, the last month about that on consultation. Like, dude, I'm, I'm working 68, 70 hours, and then I go to school full time. So it's just like, it's not a scarcity thing. It's just like, shorty, I don't, I don't got time for you. I mean, right. do or if right. not, for to be alone. You right. Know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. but I appreciate your time, man. Appreciate the shout no out. No problem, bro. Yeah, bro. What's up, bro? Yo, MS. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. Good, good. Hey, man. Huge fan. Huge honor to be here. So appreciate it. So, question for you. So, uh, this is more of a purpose thing, you know. So, I know that you've been a, a, a personal trainer before. Mm hmm. So I just recently got certified uh, last September, mm -hmm. and I, I got my foot in the door during COVID. So it's mm -hmm. obviously kind of a slower buildup than probably, you know, what, what you did when you started. Mm -hmm. But I was just wondering, besides sales, because I know that personal training is, you know, like you said, quote, 90% sales, right? Mm -hmm. But um, I just was wondering what your, outside of sales, what your biggest advice would be to a, a beginner personal trainer. The, the biggest thing, man, I'm going to tell you right now is knowledge, because what it does is it, it gives you ability to sell. So okay. if, if you don't have no skills, what am I selling? Right. All right. Yeah. Uh, You're you going to sell that fade you got on your head? That, that I mean, <laughs> what are you selling? So you need yeah. skills to sell, because when you come up and you approach somebody, when yeah. they listen to you, most of these people are more educated, like... Like, I just went and got my physical at the doctor, right? And I'm listening to him, and uh, he don't know that I got a lot of knowledge in the hum human anatomy, right? And mm -hmm. I'm listening to him, like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about because, you know, he's a doctor, so obviously I don't got as much knowledge about the body as he does, but I know enough to know when somebody bullshitting me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And so when you go up and you talking to these people, understand that they know when you're talking to them a lot of these people don't have physical therapists they might have had a trainer before you mm -hmm. and when you go up to them and they can tell you're not knowledgeable you won't sell you okay. need to sound like you know what you're talking about when i when i went when i uh when i got my physical by my doctor i'm like man this mother he know it's he know he know what he's talking about because mm -hmm. i know a lot about the human body and so i obviously don't know more than him he went to school uh, 20 years but i'm just right, saying yeah, yeah. you know and so if you got knowledge, and I can tell you right now, the number one thing to get, man, is to correct us from NASM. Okay. Yeah, if you get that, that's going to improve your earning potential tenfold. I'm telling you, my earning potential when I got that correctives, because what you got to understand is uh, most people, they not going to pay you money to lose weight when they got free programs on YouTube or, you know, everybody got these, these books they read programs. But if you can, if you can tell me how to alleviate this pain in my shoulder or my back, right, right. If you can tell me how to do that, now yeah. we're talking. But mm -hmm. if you tell me to myself, you gonna help me add an inch to my arms. I'm yeah, like, right, because that's very specific. Yeah, right. Yeah. So when you go to people about pain, mm -hmm. when you go to people about pain or alleviating pain, your sales are gonna go up tenfold because that's what people will pay for. 
A lot of people not going to really pay to lose two inches off their waist because they think they already know how to do it. Mm. But they, they would know that I don't know how to, I got this pain in my knee and I don't know how to fix that. Okay. Mm. So if you get that type of knowledge, that's going to improve you tenfold, brother. Okay. And then one more thing, this is going more towards the, the female side of things. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm 24 years old, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I consider myself to be somebody that's kind of had a lot of life experience for my age. And so, um, I tend to be more attracted to older women, you know, like women that are, you know, like in their thirties, sometimes even early forties. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of wondering if you could summarize it, how would you think that the game changes for women that much older than me, than women my age? How old are you again? I'm 24. Well, and you talking about you attracted to women in their thirties and forties, right? Like older women, just more mature women. So the thing is, it's all going to be preferences, right? But one thing I've seen in some situations, and this is funny, you'll meet a, a one 40 year old woman and now she's been with the beta male provider, but now right. she wants to get with the Chad and the Tyrone, a hot guy, right? right and then yeah. you can turn around and you got this other 41, this other 40 year old woman. And all she cares about is beta male providers, right? Because right. she's at the age where she's ready to settle down. So yeah. I don't want to generalize, because I've seen it both ways. I've seen some women, you know, they just want they they 40 years old and they want a hot stud. They they been with the they been with the dad bod and the, the you know they've been with that guy. Now they right, want exactly yeah. Now they want to get wet, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's just gonna be off of which one you talking about. Now, mm -hmm. if you're gonna get with the woman that's about the hot, the hot, you know, she's into the hot body stuff like that, Riddell. All you got to do is be confident and act like the age is not an issue for you, an mm. insecurity for you. So a right. lot of time what guys get into is when they get into these women, because she's more than likely, not all the time, you don't look like the type of guy that like hood rats. So I'm no. just going to I'm just gonna assume that you're talking about women that are well-established and pretty much got right. stuff, stuff together and stuff like Classy, that. Right? Yeah. And so it can create an insecurity in you mm -hmm. that she has more than you because – you know, you're not where you want to be, right? But as right. long as you don't show that's an insecurity on your end, it probably won't be no issue to her. If you start acting like, you know, your lack of financial success is an issue when she's not even bringing that up. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's the issue with that. If you're going to talk about the older women, you got to understand that if she's a dude, a, a type of woman that's looking for a beta male provider, as far as you as something long term, it's not going to happen. But you can be something fun in the present. But right. I can I can sit here and tell you from me when I was in the basement and I was dealing with women who was looking for a beta male provider, they would deal with me, you know, temporary, the fun mm -hmm. guy, but I didn't have nothing. You right. understand what I'm saying? And so you got to take that for what it's worth, that it's probably not going to be something long term or it's probably going to be something that's just this. So don't get attached. You see what I'm saying? Right. Just yeah. accept it for what it is, because she knows that. You know, you ain't got nothing, and that's not what she's gonna be into long term. If if she finds you attractive, she might have a little fun with you for a little while, right? And right. even if you do find a guy that's a beta male provider, she might even keep you on the side as long as you know how to play your role. Right. If you know how to play your role, don't start acting like you're getting whipped. So what happens is a lot of times women will have a guy that's on the side, right? Mm -hmm. And then this guy, and she'll have a main boyfriend. But sometimes this guy on the side, he start getting whipped, right? Yeah. He start getting weak, and he start wanting more than what she's willing to give him, and then that's what kills it, right? Because she's willing to just you know have fun with you on the side, but every time or most times, eventually this guy starts to get attached, and he starts mm -hmm. to want more, and he starts right. to want too much. Yeah. Beta male provider. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't do that, and as long as you accept it for what it is. You shouldn't have no problems. If okay. you start trying to get her to be in a relationship with you, then she's gonna ghost you. Okay, got you. Thank you so much. That's why I can speak to it. I've done it before, so that's why I can sit here and tell you, don't do that. Right. Yeah. Well, I know for sure that the last thing that I can do is get attached because I know that logically there's there's really no long term future. Mm -hmm. But I just try my best to filter out the ones that you know that I make sure that want me for me in the moment and just try to enjoy my time. So right, right, yeah. and, and that's all you're gonna have going for you right now. You only thing you're gonna have going for you now is you just gotta say, you know what, I'm building my empire. The issue is this is what I've seen from men. This has been my observation from men. Okay, 
right now you don't have nothing and so you'll depend totally on your sex appeal or, or you know or whatever however you feel about yourself and right. then you start to get something right mm -hmm. and then you your sex appeal starts to come here and then you start to lead with the wallet mm -hmm. you understand and so the issue is even if you're a guy who 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 perceives himself as having high sex appeal i need that sex appeal to stay up here even when your earning potential is up here Right, absolutely. What I, see, what I see is guys who lead with their sex appeal at first and their confidence as mm -hmm. they start to improve financially, the sex appeal starts to come here right. and they start to lead more with their wallet. Just, just get you comfortable, right? Right. So right. no matter what happens, act like sex appeal is all you have. I have to I have to tell myself that at times. <laughs> right. <Because being> <laughs> yeah. and stuff, it's easy to try to lead with them. What you want to do is you want to lead with your sex appeal. You're going to get a much better response from women when you do. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's easy to say now, but it's it's going to be a different thing when you got a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. Right. You know, it's easy because then you want to start leading with that. Well, how you was getting laid before that? Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I always try my best to stay humble, but I know that that's going to be easier said than done down the line once I start to become more successful. So hopefully I can stick with that. Exactly, bro. Yeah. But thank you so much for answering my questions again. I'm such a huge fan and I hope that I can do this again soon one day. No problem, bro. Be good, man. Yeah, you too.